Alrighty, hosses, welcome back. And in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to have a little bit more control over the navigation for your entire app because most of the time, whenever you create an app, it's going to have more than one scene, more than one screen. So we want to be able to build navigation systems that make it really easy for the user and really intuitive to switch between these screens. Now by default, we can add some things like navigation controllers. And we already saw that in the, I don't, know, I don't even know if it was the last tutorial, maybe two tutorials ago, where you can have like tabs at the bottom and you can also have a menu at the top. But in this example, I'm pretty much gonna be breaking everything down and we're gonna understand all the different pieces. And later on when we learn how to use these built-in navigation systems, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So I just made a really simple single view application. And the first thing I wanna do is this. I'm gonna to go to the storyboard, that's where I'm at now, and click this scene right here. So by default, we have one screen, one scene, and I really hate how the background of Xcode is white, and this is also white. It's kinda of hard to differentiate. So I'm gonna click this and change the background to like blue, turquoise good enough whatever all right so in order to demonstrate switching between different scenes we probably need a different scene so i'm gonna go here and if you right click anywhere in the background and just zoom out probably give you a little bit better view actually if you're using xcode on your entire desktop it's probably fine but for my screen recorder um, I have to kind of minimize it so it shows up good on like YouTube and stuff. So what I want to do now is take a view controller and drag it out. And that gives you a brand new scene. Let me just position that. And it doesn't really matter where you position it. This is just for, um, you know, visually seeing wherever it is. It doesn't really matter. You can position it down to the top whatever and another thing I want to point out before I continue is this I'm gonna zoom back into 100% you see this arrow right here what this arrow um, signifies is whenever you open your app for the very first time this scene right here is gonna be the first scene that the user sees so a lot of people were like okay what the heck is that that's what it does and you can actually move this if you want so if you decide to move it over here then this would be the initial scene, but I like it where it was. So I'm gonna take it and move it back there. All right, so now that I'm zoomed in back to 100%, the next thing I wanna do is this. I'm gonna change the background color of this one to something like red. And in this example, what I'm gonna do is zoom back out and just add one more, just so we have a bunch of different stuff to work with. So zoom back in so I can edit it. And this third one will just be like yellow. Or maybe this ugly yellow green puke. Kind of looks like baby poop. But I kind of like it in a weird way, you know? All right. So now we have three different scenes, three different screens that the user can view. But we have no way of switching between them. First of all, we don't have any buttons that the user can click. And second of all, even if we had a button that they can click, there's no connection between these screens. There's no flow. So let's learn how to do that right now. So just for this example, we will have the user click a button. So type in button and drag one out to your very first one. And since I'm not, um, you know, using proper size classes or layouts or anything like that, just stick it in the top left. And then whenever we run the simulator, we can see it. And change the text on this to like, go to scene two. All right, so that looks good right there. And whenever they click that, I'll show you guys how to change the screen to this one. And we'll also have a button on here that says, go to scene three. So this, of course, is scene one, scene two. And this baby poop one is scene three. All right, so now we have buttons so the user can actually touch something on the screen. So how do we pretty much get that transition or that segue between them? Well, what we do is actually really incredibly easy. Select the button that you want 
and hold down control on your keyboard and drag that blue line and release it to whatever scene that you want to transition to whenever they click the button. Now, a segue, of course, that's how you pronounce that word. I actually didn't even know. I heard people say it before, but I never seen it written down until um, like whenever I started learning about iOS development. So it's kind of weird, but whatever. So just choose show right now. And I'll talk to you guys about the different types of segues or transitions that we can have. But right now, what this does whenever you add that connection is it says, okay, now I know whenever the user taps this button that you want to go to this scene right here. So we can actually run this right now. Let me go switch to like iPhone 5 or something. All right, so once my stimulator loads, why are you unable to run, you son of a... Probably because I was moving it around. All right, beautiful. All right, so remember, the reason that it knows to go here is because this little symbol symbol says this is the very first launcher screen for this app. So it starts out on your blue one, and whenever the user clicks the button, go to scene two, it takes them to that other scene, scene two. So now, since we didn't add any functionality to, functionality to this, whenever they click this, you see I'm clicking it, but nothing is happening. So we already know how to do that. So let's take care of that right now. Select the button, hold down control and drag. And if we hit show and run this again, check it out. Go to scene two, takes us to the red scene. Go to scene three, takes us to the baby poop screen. Looking awesome. Now we're like, uh, all right then, um, how do we get back to, you know, that red scene or that blue scene again? Well, there are a lot of different ways. Of course, since you already know that functionality, you probably could figure out how to make a button to make a segue in the opposite direction. But what I want to do is show you guys how to add a navigation controller. And this takes care of a lot of the background functionality. And another thing I want to mention is this. Let me stop this and run it again and show you guys a problem that we have. You see, in the user's mind, whenever they're going from one scene to another, the way that mobile apps are built, they're kind of gonna um, picture it, a scene sliding in from the right to the left. Now check this out. By default, the transition is whenever I click this, it slides up from the bottom. So I'm gonna click it again and see how that scene slides up from the bottom. Well, what we can do is I'm going to show you guys in the next video how to customize these uh, transitions. But whenever we add a navigation controller, what it does is by default, it takes those scenes and slides it in from the right. So how do we add a navigation controller? Well, what we do is we select that first scene. So make sure that this is selected. And if you go to the editor, embed in navigation controller, what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you an overall navigation controller for your entire app, your entire storyboard. We can see this easier if we zoom out. All right, so it put it in a really weird place. Let me zoom out to 25%. But all we can do is take this and drag it down. Again, I really wish that uh, YouTube videos were bigger so I can record my whole screen, but there you go. Let me zoom back out. And you guys can see this a little bit easier. Now also take note that this initial arrow, it points to the navigation controller. And well, all we have to do now is test and run this and you can see what happened here. So we saw that, okay, we have this bar at the top now. This bar is the navigation controller. And if you hop back in Xcode, you can see that what it did whenever we added that navigation controller is it added that bar to the top of every scene. So this navigation controller pretty much controls the entire navigation for your entire app. Now, one of the things that this does by default is whenever you click go to scene two, it gives you that back button. So it does two things that we notice right away. First of all, it allows you to go back by clicking that button. And of course, at the very first one, you can't go back because nothing's before it. 
So it gives you a natural flow. And another thing I want to point out is you see how before the scenes were appearing from the bottom and sliding up. Well, they now appear from the right and slide to the left. And that's a lot easier for the user. It's a lot more intuitive because you see how this back button is pointing left. It just makes a lot more sense and it's a lot more natural feeling. So there you go. There is the basics of how to create additional scenes and how to add segues to navigate between them and also how to add a navigation controller to give you some pretty much default functionality whenever you're working with navigation. But of course, there is a lot more to cover. So uh, yeah, that's probably enough for this tutorial. But uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.